here we are, week 19. If, if you've made it this far with us, that, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you've, you've stuck around, participated in this way, and, and learned with us online as we've studied God's Word together through the end of last school year and, and almost through the entire summer now. Uh, today, we are, we are diving back into our origin story series. This is our last one, actually, and, and next week we are starting a new series called Stretch, that is, that is all about working out our spiritual muscles by doing disciplines that stretch our faith. But we've also got some, some photos from our mini golf event at the end of this video today, so you'll want to stick around to, to see those too. But, but that's enough talking. Let's jump right into things with Axis Online Week 19. I think that one of the, the most attractional aspects of superhero stories, whether they be in a, in a movie or, or a comic book, is, is that the hero saves the world. If we were to kind of sit back and analyze a whole bunch of Marvel movies or something like that, we'd, we'd likely see that they, they follow a similar formula. There's a, there's a character introduced who is who's kind of admittedly a little bit weak on their own or at least has some sort of, of major flaw, but then they receive superpowers or, or training of some sort. And when that happens, they're equipped to, to go and to fight evil and to save the planet from some great galactic threat. Superheroes, they save the world. They're not ordinary. They're, they're shrimpy teenagers bit by radioactive spiders and then granted the ability to, to fight, uh, fight crime and into web swing. They're, they're arrogant businessmen who spend a whole bunch of money and, and resources on technology that enables them to do pretty much miraculous things. They're, they're talking raccoons, they're immortal trees, they're, they're even aliens from different planets, but superheroes save the world. And that saving bit is, is what I think draws us to, to these types of stories. Don't we want to save the world? Don't, don't you want to save the world? Don't, don't we want to be that cool and unique and powerful superhero that is able to do such? Don't we want to shoot lasers out of our eyes and, and run faster than the speed of light? And we've We've, we've talked about some of this and, and referenced some of these stories so far in this origin story lesson series. In fact, we've seen that heroes embrace who God has made them to be. And we illustrated that point with the story of Captain America. But, but we've also talked about how heroes care for the people in front of them and that heroes are stronger when they're on a team. And we, we used the Justice League and the, the Avengers to talk about those things. And, and today, we're going to be continuing on in this origin story series. But here's the deal. We like superheroes because they save the world. And in some sense, we want to be like them because we also have similar lofty ambitions. But is that really a Christian posture to take? Is, is saving the world something that Jesus has called us to do? When I was in high school and much younger in my faith, I had gotten the idea that in order to be the best Christian possible, I needed to become an overseas missionary. I needed to take the gospel to Japan as a street evangelist. Why? I had met a few Christian missionaries and they, they seemed like superheroes to me. These, these were people who were doing it. These were people who were on the front lines fighting back evil. They, they were out there spreading God's goodness within the trenches and doing stuff that really mattered to God. Uh, but as I, I grew in my faith, and more importantly, as, as I found a, a few mature Christians that came alongside and, and mentored me, I realized that I was idolizing within that missionary calling something that wasn't very healthy or even... Christian for that matter. <laughs> I, I wanted to be the star of the show. 
I wanted to be the one who was doing the action. I wanted to be the one who was, was the, doing the saving. And it didn't really matter if Jesus was involved or not. Now, now don't get me wrong. Being, being a missionary is a wonderful calling. And, and God does equip certain people to do such a task. But, but I think that my problem back in the day, and really many pro- people's problem today, is that we think that the ordinary Christian life is, is just that, ordinary. However, the reality is that, that, that believers are heroic in ordinary situations because that is what Jesus has called us into. But let's back up for a minute. What is ordinary? And and what is it that Jesus has called us into? Well, let's, let's check out two passages of scripture. Both are written by the Apostle Paul. The first one is Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. And the second one is, is Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. Uh, that, that Galatians passage, it says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. And then Colossians 1, 9 through 14 says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people and the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Do you see the common theme that that connects both of these two passages as well as, as really many, many other passages in the New Testament? Jesus, through his sacrifice on the cross, has rescued those of us who call him Lord from this present evil age, and he's offered us citizenship in something called the the kingdom of God or his eternal kingdom. We have been transferred from one reality and placed into another. We have been plucked from one domain and placed into another, at least those of us who believe in him. And And if you've grown up in the church, or at least if you've been around Christian circles for, for any length of time, this language, it might seem kind of familiar to you, but stop and think about it for a moment. This is, this is some pretty crazy stuff. This is some superhero story sounding stuff. The, the Christian life is a reality bending cosmic level journey. Do you remember that passage of scripture that we looked at in week one of this series. It was, uh, it was 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 to 21. So I want to revisit that passage too for a moment. And so I'm going to read it again. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has commissioned, or his, he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we, we talked about this verse a little bit the first week, but, but what does it mean? What is, what is the Apostle Paul talking about here, right? Uh, well, first, I want you all to, to recognize the one who is doing the action here. Who is, the, who is the superhero in the gospel story? It's Jesus. He's the main player. He is the one who, who saves the world. Or to use the, the Apostle Paul's language, he is the one who is reconciling us to himself in order to free us from our sin. 
But we have also been given a part to play in the grand scheme of things too. We who are new creations, we who have been given a new origin story through Jesus' blood spilled are ambassadors of Christ. We're the ones who are, have been called to, to point to the hero. We're the ones who have been equipped to tell others about how this hero can save them. It's not our job to save the world, but it is our job to tell others about he who can. Now, now back to that which Christ has called us into, and, and back to that word ordinary. If, if we were to go and make a list of ordinary things that Christians have been commanded to do, what, what might they be? To me, when, what comes to mind are, are things like prayer and scripture reading and other spiritual disciplines, but, but also having friendships with fellow believers and, and caring for the marginalized and the outcast and, and serving other people and confessing sins and, and forgiving. These are, these are some of the ordinary tasks that all believers are commanded to do, right? And, and of course, they're, they're not web-slinging. <laughs> they're, not, they're not flying around in a multi-billion dollar mechanical suit of armor. These aren't superhuman strength or running at, at you know, time-warping speed. But, but these are practices that make us ambassadors of Christ, participants in Jesus' ministry of reconciliation and, and heralds of the new and better reality that is to come. So, they are ordinary, if by ordinary we mean practices that have significance on a cosmic, eternal level. That's because when we do them, we are proclaiming to others around us that we are citizens of this new kingdom and, and members of new creation. And, and these practices and, and ways of loving and caring are reflections of the goodness and love that's found in such. And when we participate in them in the midst of this present evil age, we too are showing the world how much better it will be in God's kingdom and, and why they too might want to join us within it. Or maybe we could explain it this way. It's, it's been a little bit since probably any of us have been to the, the movie theater because obviously they're, they're all shut down right now, but... But think back to the, the last time that, that you went to the movie theater to, to see a movie. And, and usually, before your movie starts, right, there's, there's like 15 to 20 minutes of, of teaser trailers that, that kind of tease upcoming releases, right? So, so what I want you to do is, is think back to a time where you saw a movie trailer that got you really, really excited to see the full movie upon its release. Uh, for, for example, a good one for me, I guess, is the Avengers Infinity War trailer. I saw that trailer in, in the theaters in November of 2018, and, and I remember just feeling really, really ecstatic about it. And, and there was a span of time, admittedly, there was a, a span of time where I was going on YouTube to just rewatch that trailer over and over and over just because I was so ready for the full movie to release. Well, that's, that's kind of like what being an ambassador for Christ is like. We are supposed to be a really good teaser before the full thing comes out. We, through these ordinary Christian practices and, and through our love for one another, are meant to be like a movie trailer that gives a small glimpse into what the final thing is going to be like. And it, and it might not seem like it at first glance, but that is really, really important. God hasn't called you to save the world. God hasn't called me to save the world. That's his job. But God has called us to be little heroes or ambassadors that, that point to that one heroic act that he did through which he saved the world. And, and while we wait for that hero's return, we're to live as, as heralds of his new creation coming through our ordinary, everyday actions. Heroes are heroic in ordinary moments. But our participation in these ordinary moments is anything but ordinary. 
Hey, it's, it's Colby again. First of all, thanks so much for to, to all of you who came and, and hung out with us during our mini golf event last week. <laughs> I know it was a bit confusing to say the least because we, we had to postpone it twice because of, of rain, but, but I'm so happy we did ultimately. It was, a, it was a perfect day to play mini golf and to hang out at the beach afterwards. And it was also really, really, really good to see all of you in person. To, to see Matt make that hole in one, to, to see Josiah accidentally launch one of his golf balls way out into the parking lot, to, to, to play knockoff and all that other fun stuff too. I've, I've been really missing you all and, and it was so great to, to see many of you last Thursday. But, and, and if you weren't able to make last week's event, you, you haven't missed out on everything. In August, we've got another in-person event called River Games. It's going to be on Friday, August the 14th here at Word of Life Church, and we're going to be doing some kayaking and, and some other challenging things. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you invite your friends. But that's all that I have this week, so maybe I'll see you in person in church this Sunday. But, but if not, I at least will see you digitally here. See ya. <laughs>